Royal men may be powerful, but there are also royal women who wield the same level of influence. These women are ambitious, intelligent, politically astute, generous, and sometimes ruthless, which makes them powerful. However, being powerful does not mean they engage in ruthless actions. Instead, they combine power and generosity to exert soft power. Therefore, in today's video, we're talking about the 12 most powerful royal women in 2024. So without further ado, let's begin. At number 12, we've got Queen Sylvia of Sweden. Queen Sylvia of Sweden, born Sylvia Renata Summerlath, has been a significant figure in the Swedish monarchy since her marriage to King Carl XVI Gustav in 1976. Over the years, she's become a powerful and influential queen known for her dedication and various social causes and her ability to handle her power with grace and effectiveness. Queen Sylvia was born December 23rd, 1940. 43 in Heidelberg, Germany. She spent her early years in Brazil before returning to Germany, where she completed her education. She met King Carl Gustav in the summer 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich, and they married in 1976 after his ascension to the throne. Queen Sylvia is the first Swedish queen to have had a professional career, which set a modern precedent for the role. She has dedicated her life to philanthropy, focusing on children's rights, dementia care, and drug addiction prevention. Her initiatives include founding the World Childhood Foundation in 1999 and the Sylvia Hemet Foundation, which promotes dementia care. Queen Sylvia has used her position to advocate for various social causes, including children's rights, women's rights, and sustainable development. She's been actively involved in organizations that work towards improving the lives of disadvantaged children and promoting gender equality. Her commitment to these causes has earned her respect and admiration both in Sweden and internationally. At number 11, we've got former Queen Margaret II of Denmark. Queen Margaret II of Denmark, who reigned from 1972 until her abdication in 2024, is a figure of immense historical and cultural significance. Her reign, marked by a blend of traditional and modernity, has left an indelible mark on Denmark and its people. Her path to the throne was paved by a constitutional amendment in 1953 that allowed women to inherit the throne, making her the heir presumptive to her father, King Frederick IX. She ascended to the throne in 1972, becoming the first female monarch of Denmark in 500 years. Denmark's constitutional monarchy limits the monarch's political power, with the prime minister proceeding over the cabinet and the parliament being the supreme legislative body. Despite these limitations, Margaret II enjoyed immense popular support, with approval ratings of around 80% by the time of her abdication. Margaret II was a hands-on queen, attending to government meetings, writing her own speeches, and actively participating in international diplomacy. Her approachability and warm manners endeared her to the Danish people who admired her for walking the streets of Copenhagen virtually unescorted and for her talents as a linguist and designer. Throughout her reign, Margaret II skillfully balanced preserving tradition with adapting to changing times. She played a crucial role in modernizing the royal family and, and maintaining its relevance in a rapidly evolving world. Next, we've got Queen Sanja of Norway. Queen Sanja became Norway's first queen consort in 52 years, following the death of King Olav V on January 17, 1991, and the ascension of her husband, King Harald V. Her journey to the throne began with her marriage to the then Crown Prince Harald in 19. 68, and she was consecrated in Nidaros Cathedral in 1991. Despite not being of royal lineage, Sanja was immediately accepted by the Norwegian people due to her charm, grace, and intelligence. Her early involvement in charitable causes, such as serving as vice president of the Norwegian Red Cross from 1978 to 1990, laid the foundation for her influential role. Queen Sanja holds patronages of up to 15 organizations, reflecting her broad influence in various sectors. She is particularly known for her, her contributions to the arts, having founded the Queen Sanja International Music Competition and the Queen Sanja Print Award. Her involvement in promoting artists showcases her influence and power in the cultural sphere. Queen Sanja has successfully and skillfully balanced preserving tradition with embracing modernity. She has been involved in various cultural and social initiatives, such as establishing the Queen Sanja Art Stable, a venue for arts and culture. Her interest in nature, outdoor recreation, and the environment further highlights her modern approach to her role. The future for Queen Sanja involves furthering her impact on the arts and cultural discussions. At number 9, we've got Princess Charlene of Monaco. Princess Charlene of Monaco, a former Olympic swimmer, has become a significant figure in Monaco and beyond. Princess Charlene's power is significantly derived from her extensive charitable work. She founded Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation 
Foundation in 2012, focusing on sports and underprivileged children. Her involvement in various charitable organizations, such as the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the Special Olympics, further solidifies her influence. Charlene holds several honorary positions, including Honorary President of Monaco Against Autism and the South African Red Cross Society and Pink Ribbon Monaco. These roles allow her to champion various causes and extend her influence in both Monaco and internationally. Charlene's dedication to cultural and environmental causes also contributes to her power. She's been involved in raising funds for disabled athletes, championing the environment, and promoting charitable causes in South Africa and Monaco as well. Her role as a patron to the arts and cultural discussions further enhances her influence. Princess Charlene has faced challenges in balancing her public duties with her private life. Initially, she struggled with isolation and public pressure upon moving to Monaco. However, she has managed to find solace in simple activities like gardening and hiking, which help her cope with the demands of her role. In the future, Charlene's influence is expected to continue through her involvement in charitable causes and environmental efforts. Next, we've got Princess Catherine of Wales. Princess Catherine of Wales, formerly known as Kate Middleton, has become one of the most influential figures in the British monarchy. Catherine became the Princess of Wales through her marriage to Prince William, the male heir to the throne. Female heirs have not bestowed this title, making it exclusive to those who marry into the royal family. This title places her in one of the most exclusive clubs in the world, giving her a significant platform. Catherine has long been a pivotal member of the royal family, and her role was further strengthened during the coronation of King Charles III. Elevated to a queen-in-waiting, she has started calling the shots and is being listened to more than ever before. Her influence is growing, and she plays a central role in modernizing the monarchy. The Kate effect refers to the economic influence Catherine wields. Her fashion choices can turn brands into overnight success stories, significantly boosting sales and brand awareness. This economic power extends beyond the UK, influencing shoppers globally. Catherine is playing a central role in modernizing the monarchy, helping it to stay relevant to younger generations. Her maternal approach and ability to connect with the public, especially during walkabouts, have made her a beloved figure. Catherine has a significant influence on Prince William, helping him to set up for his leadership role as Prince of Wales. At number seven, we've got the hereditary Princess Sophie of Liechtenstein. Hereditary Princess Sophie of Liechtenstein holds a significant position within one of Europe's most powerful hereditary monarchies. Her influence is partly derived from the delegation of authority within the monarchy. In 2004, Prince Hans Adams II delegated his governmental authority to his son, Hereditary Prince Alois, which indirectly bolstered Sophie's influence within the monarchy. This delegation has allowed her to play a significant role in the governance and decision-making process of Liechtenstein. The 2003 constitutional referendum significantly expanded the powers of monarchy, granting the prince, and by extension, the Hereditary Princess, considerable political authority. This includes the ability to appoint and dismiss governmental officials and dissolve the parliament. These powers have been instrumental in establishing her influential role within the monarchy. Hereditary Princess Sophie wields significant political authority within the monarchy. She has the power to appoint key government officials, including ministers, judges, and court officials, which gives her substantial influence over the governance structure of Liechtenstein. This authority is a critical aspect of her power within the monarchy. Sophie's active involvement in national politics and her role in representing Liechtenstein internationally contribute to her influential position as well. Her diplomatic engagements and public appearances help promote the country's culture and values on a global stage, enhancing her soft power. In the future, hereditary Princess Sophie is likely to continue exercising her authority. Next, we've got Queen Rania of Jordan. Queen Rania of Jordan is a prominent figure known for advocacy, humanitarian efforts, and influence both within Jordan and on its global stage. Queen Rania became the Queen of Jordan in 1999 when her husband, King Abdullah II, ascended to the throne. Her marriage to then Prince Abdullah bin Al-Hussein in 1993 marked the beginning of her journey into royalty. Rania has been a vocal advocate for causes including women's and children's rights, education, and environmental concerns. Her active involvement in these areas has significantly contributed to her influence. She has also embraced new forms of communication, such as social media, to reach a broader audience and advocate for her causes. She is known for her tireless work to improve the conditions of weaker sections of her country and to enhance Jordan's image on the world stage. She has founded and led numerous initiatives, such as the Jordan River Foundation and the My School Initiative, aimed at improving education and community welfare. Queen Rania focuses on strategic issues and organizations 
organizational changes rather than current operational problems. Her leadership style involves empowering local communities, driving innovation, and promoting entrepreneurship, especially among young people. In the future, Queen Rania is likely to continue advocating for causes related to women, children, education, and environmental concerns. Rania will continue to represent Jordan internationally, promoting the country's culture and values. At number five, we've got Empress Masako of Japan. Empress Masako of Japan, a highly accomplished and educated woman, has faced numerous challenges and triumphs throughout her life. However, Masako's marriage to Crown Prince Naruhito in 1993 marked the beginning of her journey into the Japanese imperial family. Despite initial struggles, she has gradually embraced her role. Her husband's unwavering support has been crucial in her adaptation and recovery from adjustment disorder. Empress Masako has gradually increased her public engagements, reflecting her willingness to embrace her role. She's the potential to become a strong advocate for mental health, drawing from her own experiences with adjustment disorder. Her public appearances and involvement in state visits, such as the one to the United Kingdom, demonstrate her growing influence. Masako's journey and resilience make her a powerful role model for women in Japan and beyond. Her ability to navigate the challenges of a male-dominated society and her potential advocacy for women's issues highlight her influence. Her story resonates with many, drawing comparisons to other influencers figures like Princess Diana. There is growing support from the public for changes in the imperial household law to allow a female emperor, which could significantly impact Masako's future influence. If implemented, it would mark a historical shift in Japan's imperial tradition and further empower Empress Masako and other women in the royal family. Next, we've got Queen Maxima of the Netherlands. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands is a prominent figure known for advocacy in financial inclusion, social integration, and various humanitarian causes. Queen Maxima's firm grasp of technical issues combined with her political savvy and boundless energy has enabled her to masterfully use her role to support decision makers and promote inclusive finance. Her ability to engage with leaders from various sectors, including the UN, G20, and the World Bank, further amplifies her influence. Queen Maxima is known for her warmth, charisma, and empathetic nature, which have endeared her to the Dutch people and earned her respect worldwide. Her ability to connect with people on a personal level, including through nonverbal communications adds to her powerful presence. In addition to her advocacy work, Queen Maxima holds numerous public posts and performs representative duties, such as representing the royal house on official occasions and being a member of the Dutch Council of State. Her involvement in various cultural and charitable initiatives further solidifies her influence. Queen Maxima handles her power by actively engaging in advocacy and public engagements. She promotes inclusive finance in the Netherlands and globally, focusing on entrepreneurship, financial education and managing money sensibly. Her public appearances and speeches at international gatherings demonstrate her commitment to her causes. Queen Maxima's further influence will likely involve continued advocacy for financial health and responsible technology for financial inclusion. At number three, we've got Queen Mary of Denmark. Queen Mary of Denmark, originally from Australia, has become a significant figure in the Danish monarchy. Her power is significantly derived from her passionate advocacy for health, gender equality, and the empowerment of women and girls. Her commitment to these causes has earned her admiration and respect globally. She's also a patron of over 30 charitable organizations, further extending her influence. Mary's ability to engage with the public and her approachable demeanor have made her extremely popular among the Danish people. People. Her dedication to social causes and her successful integration into royal life have demonstrated that a royal can be both traditional and contemporary. She engages in a variety of official duties representing Denmark at state functions, hosting foreign dignitaries, and attending cultural events. Her ability to maintain a sense of normalcy in her family life while fulfilling her royal responsibilities is a testament to her adept handling of power. Mary's dedication to social causes such as health, education, women's rights, and environmental issues underscores her compassionate approach to power. Her work through the Mary Foundation and other charitable endeavors ensures that her influence is felt across various sectors. As Queen, Mary is expected to continue her advocacy for important social causes. Next, we've got Princess Anne of the UK. Princess Anne is known for her incredible work ethic, reportedly handling 70% of the royal workload at the age of 73. She regularly attends over 400 events a year, showcasing her commitments to royal duties in the public service. This dedication has earned her respect and recognition both within the royal family and among the public. 
As the royal family has become more streamlined, Princess Anne's influence has grown. She is seen as a trusted advisor to her brother, King Charles III, which positions her as a key figure in the monarchy's future. Her experience and established presence make her a vital asset in royal affairs. Known for her quick wit and dry humor, Princess Anne has a personality that resonates well with the public. Her straightforward approach and ability to connect with people enhance her standing and effectiveness as a royal representative. Princess Anne handles her power with a blend of dedication and pragmatism. She's often described as a no-nonsense and focused person, which allows her to navigate the complexities of royal duties effectively. Her commitment to various charitable organizations and causes, particularly in areas like equestrian sports and youth development, reflects her desire to make a tangible impact through her position. Looking ahead, Princess Anne is likely to exercise even more power within the royal family. And at number one, we've got Queen Matilda of Belgium. Queen Matilda has been deeply involved in various charitable activities aimed at addressing social issues such as education, child poverty, intergenerational poverty, and the position of women in society. She has served as the honorary president of organizations like UNICEF Belgium and the Breast International Group, reflecting her significant role in social causes. Her commitment to public service is further demonstrated by her involvement in numerous United Nations panels with a special focus on children's rights. Queen Matilda has represented Belgium on a global stage, serving as the World Health Organization's Special Representative for Immunization and being named as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal Advocate. Her involvement in international initiatives demonstrates her influence and reach beyond national borders. Her advocacy for sustainable development goals has empowered her to drive impactful initiatives, such as the implementation of climate adaptation solutions in Bangladesh. Queen Mathilda's youth, charisma, and beauty have endeared her to the Belgian public, making her a relatable and influential figure. Her low-profile nature and deep roots in both the Dutch-speaking North and French-speaking South of Belgium have made her universally relatable, enhancing her influence as a royal figure. Queen Matilda views her role as a monarch in the 21st century as listening to people and giving a voice to those who are not heard. And with this, we wrap up this video. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you find our channel interesting, then subscribe to it. Thank you. See you in the next video.